Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio. So today, we need to look at some cars that are coming around in EV Heroes. We have three cars we need to talk about today. We've got a new Smeagol, we've got a new Eldegoss, and we've got the first ever Gordy car, that's right, a brand new supporter. And what they all have in common is they all love energy, use energy, and frankly, energy seems to very much be a central theme here. So we might as well start off with, I don't know, let's start off with Gordy because, well, Gordy's kind of a big deal in terms of this being the first Gordy card we've ever seen. Now our translations here do of course come from the lovely Antoine Boulet. By now I'm assuming you probably guessed that. And generally, although there are exceptions, if I don't tell you, it's probably Antoine. And what we've got here is a supporter card that reads, look at the top seven cards of your deck, reveal any number of energy you find there, and put them into your hand. Then shuffle the remaining cards back into your deck. Now, at this stage, I want to remind you how gosh darn good Antoine has proven to be when it comes to reliable translations over the years. And then I want you to look at these precise wording there and see that it says energy cards, not basic energy cards. And that is absolutely huge. Because if you're playing a deck that revolves around special energy... This can be awesome, and there will be some decks around there. I mean, we've recently seen single and rapid strike energy. Now, admittedly, if we're looking at single strike energy, we've got Hound Doom that can not only search it out, that can attach it. And if we're looking at rapid strike energy, we do have Octillery, which can search it out. But you're talking kind of one at a time. And sometimes that'll be enough. And sometimes it won't. We could look at things like Cherim that lets you attach as much grass energy during your turn as you like. Or Frostmoth that lets you attach as much water energy during your turn as you like. And this will potentially get you many, many energies. Okay, fine, we're talking pre-rotation. Though whenever I talk about the rotation, please do bear in mind that Japan will be rotating a little bit later than us. So these combos that we're not going to have because essentially the rotation happens when EV Heroes drops. Do bear in mind Japan will have them for a little while. I believe they will anyway. We can look at Porygon Z, which allows you to attach as much special energy during your turn as you like. And that absolutely can take advantage of something like Gordy. Bearing in mind you can play stuff like Draw Energy that draws a card when you attach it. Or Capture Energy that lets you bench a basic when you attach it. So that you can actually not just be getting energy but also getting Pokemon and cards and all of that good stuff. The thing is, if you were playing back in the Heart Gold Soul Silver era, this card is going to look very familiar to you. It's interviewers' questions. It is literally interviewers' questions. And as somebody who kind of wants to be a content creator, always had a bit of love for interviewers' questions. The thing is, that card was fine. It wasn't amazing. And for what it's worth, interviewers' questions was actually look at the top eight cards of your deck. This is only look at the top seven. Although interviewers' questions back in the day 100% most definitely could get you special energy, not just basic. So that is an interesting thing to point out. What I'm saying here is it's fine. But in a world where interviewers' questions wasn't great... I'm not sure we should expect this to be. An interviewer's question saw play in some decks, but it wasn't an absolute staple. I mean, Embor can attach as much energy during your turn as you like, and that won the World Championships piloted by David Cohen back in 2011, and that didn't play interviewer's questions. And honestly, I just think we've got better options here. Certainly pre-rotation, we can take a look at Energy Spinner. And if you go second on turn one, that gets you free energy, which honestly sounds pretty good to me. And we've got the next card we're going to look at in just a moment. The other thing is, it's not guaranteed. And that for me is a little bit of a problem. The fact that you could get all this energy, but there's no guarantee that you actually will. That, for me, is pretty much enough to make me a little bit worried. I'm going to go ahead and give this free Wassies. I don't think it's a terrible card, and I'm delighted that 
Gordy's finally got his own card. But I'm going to be perfectly honest with you here. I don't think this is a particular powerhouse card. I think we've got better options. And one of those better options is Eldegoss. And I like Eldegoss. Now, if we look at the basics here, it's got 80 HP, which on the one hand is low. But it does give you access to level ball, which is quite nice. Means you can grab it a little bit more easily. And you've got a retreat cost of 1, which is nice and low. Weakness to fire is kind of irrelevant because of your 80 HP. And your weakness, your hitting and all of that is also kind of irrelevant. Given that you've got, you know, you're not a good attacker, right? If we look at the attack, 1 grass energy, 30 damage during your opponent's next turn. This Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. And the weird thing is... We could look at the jump bluff from Heart Gold Soul Silver. Apparently, we're back in the Heart Gold Soul Silver era at the moment. And that jump bluff had this attack 30 damage and take 30 less from attacks the following turn. And actually, that jump bluff was really good. It was called Leaf Guard, not Cotton Guard, but it was the same attack. The thing is, no one actually played Jump Bluff for that. People played it for Mass Attack, 10 damage for each Pokemon in play, and Leaf Guard was a lovely bonus. If you could get a KO with it, you generally would. So no, ladies and gentlemen, we don't like the attack. But we absolutely do like the ability. Cotton Carrier. Also, I really, and I know it's not going to happen, but I would love it if the ability was Cotton Carrier and the attack was Cotton Barrier. That would really amuse me. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and put them into your hand. Yes! Now, admittedly, this very much is basic energy. You are not getting special energy here. Fine, etc. But I absolutely love it. And the thing is, this is also just a reprint of another card. Although it is polite enough to not be a nerfed version of it. It's the Rabombi from Burning Shadows, which had the same attack there. They called it Honey Gatherer. Although this has 10 more HP. Although it doesn't have resistance to darkness, so I'll let you figure that one out. The point is, Rabombi never saw a huge amount of play. But I don't care. Because the fact of the matter is, this is one of those abilities where I don't need to see it seeing a huge amount of play. Because we know what it can do. It's a stage one Pokemon, so it's going to take one bench space. It's going to take probably four spots in your deck. But it guarantees you've got that energy at the right time. And there are going to be plenty of decks where you just need that energy in order to guarantee a KO. And for that reason, I am all in on this. This seems amazing. Yes, you could look at this and go, well, Rabombi never saw a huge amount of play. I don't think this will. And that's a hard argument to really counter. Because it's true. And I still don't care. For what it's worth, Rabombi did see some play. It just wasn't a particularly powerhouse card. But the fact of the matter is, we can look at cards like Cherim and Frostmoth we mentioned a moment ago. They're clearly going to love this. Now, whether you can find space in your deck, whether you can afford to do it, that's up to you. But the fact of the matter is, there is so much potential here... Because there are going to be turns where you need that extra energy. The whole point of these cards is that you are attaching as much energy as you can. So the more energy you can find, the better. So if you can guarantee two energy before you've even started playing around with your supporter or any of that, that is going to be huge. In more, it's being rotated over here, but Japan's going to have it for a little while longer. Examples, Blacephalon here. We all know that the downside of Blacephalon is finding the energy. Blacephalon is great. No one's arguing it's not. But the fact of the matter is, having to find all that energy can be a real pain. Free energy, 50 damage, and you discard as many fire energy from your hand as you like. And it does 50 for each you discarded. So the more fire energy you've got, the better. And this basically lets you search your deck, etc. Find everything you can and then grab this. Incidentally, this should be the last thing you do. So if you're playing a Professor's Research, if you take the energy with Eldegoss first, there are fewer energy left in your deck and you're less likely to hit it off of Professor's Research. So you want as much energy as possible in your deck when you play Research and then Eldegoss will take it out 
afterwards so you're not lowering your odds of hitting it. And in decks like that, this is going to be really, really good. We've all lost games because we couldn't find the energy. We've all played these energy-hungry Pokemon combos, whatever, and ended up falling down because we didn't have the right amount of energy at the right time. Well, Eldegoss will fix that, ladies and gentlemen. And especially in, say, a Welder deck, because remember, Eldegoss is any energy. It doesn't have to be grass. In a Welder deck, this guarantees you've got two energy to attach with a Welder. How many times have you had to play Welder for one energy or worse had to discard welder because you didn't have any energy you had to play professor's research because you didn't have the energy to justify playing welder no more ladies and gentlemen no more i'm giving this four wassies i really like this and yes i know rabombi wasn't a powerhouse card that saw a huge amount of play and no i don't particularly care this is as far as i'm concerned a genuinely awesome brilliant card and i am a huge fan of it it's not going to be for every deck i mean to be fair it could work in any deck but i i don't think it is good enough in every deck but i absolutely think the, there are going to be times this is just going to be amazing. And then we get to Smeargle. Because you see, so far in this video, we've talked about a couple of cards that will get you the energy. It's time to focus in on a Pokemon that can use the energy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Smeargle. Before we get going, compare this art to the Eldegoss art for a second. I love when Pokemon do this. Clearly, Smeargle has been running through, dragging the paint on its tail, and then Eldegoss is coming through shortly thereafter, going over the paint. I love it. The things like this make me extremely happy. It is also worth pointing out they are both drawn by Saito. So, clearly, yeah, love it. So we have a look at Smeargle then, we've got the same 80 HP, so level ball works. Retreat cost of 1, which is cool. Weakness to fighting, again, you've got 80 HP. It's not ideal, but for instance, it'll survive a strafe from Rapid Strike Urshifu. So actually, yeah. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but Urshifu is doing 60 with weakness, you've got 80, it's at least something. And being a colourless Pokemon, you don't have any weaknesses you're hitting. You do have powerful colourless energy if you would like to do a little bit of extra damage. That could be kind of fun. And what we've got here is a single attack, but it seems absolutely worth it. Two colourless energy, 30 damage. Reveal any number of basic energy from your hand. This attack does 30 more damage for each type of basic energy you revealed in this way. So, yeah. Let's go a little bit nuts. And incidentally, we need to remember that when the rotation was announced, we were told that basic fairy energy would be rotating out. This is an example. I'm going to do a video about this next week or the week after when I've got a bit more time. This is an example of why it is actually kind of annoying that we're losing basic fairy energy even though there are going to be no fairy Pokemon, because there are always cards like this that revolve around how much energy different types you've got in your hand, attached to a Pokemon, in your discard, whatever. And this is actually kind of annoying in that regard. Boo, hiss, etc. And with fairy gone, that's going to leave us with eight types of basic energy. Water, grass, fire, fighting, psychic, metal, darkness, and lightning. Yes, it's a little bit sad that it's gone away. So, in theory, you can have eight different kinds of basic energy, which is 8 times 30, add 30, which is 9 times 30, which is 270. Potentially more if you've got powerful colorless energy in play. And actually, 270 is still not VMAX KOing territory. And I know I'm talking about an ADHP basic Pokemon KOing, or one-hit KOing Pokemon VMAXs, but the fact of the matter is, if I'm doing this, I've got to have two energy on the Smeargle, and I've got to have eight different types of basic energy in my hand. That's a lot to ask for. You'll get Pokemon Vs, incidentally, but not Vmaxes. It is worth pointing out that you just reveal them, you don't shuffle them back into your deck. So if your opponent doesn't play any hand disruption, you can actually just do this every turn. 
Recess Stamp is rotating out, but Marnie isn't. So Marnie is going to be a little bit of a problem here. Marnie's going to reset your hand. And it's not only going to reset your hand, but it is also going to put your energy at the bottom of your deck. Meaning you will have to play some kind of searching card. Just playing a supporter is unlikely to get you what you want. The thing is, the way this deck is clearly designed, and Antoine actually said this over on Twitter, I found out. But this is my point too, gosh darn it. The point of the deck, it's clearly, I mean, look at the artwork, right? They want you to make an Elder Goss Smeagol deck. And the theory is that your field generally comprises of four Eldegoss, two Smeagol. Yes, I know there'll probably be some support drawing Pokemon, etc. But just bear with me for a moment. And then essentially, Eldegoss will search you the eight basic energy every turn. So it doesn't matter if your opponent's playing any kind of hand disruption. You're just sitting there hitting a consistent 270. Which could be fun. But I rather suspect, because you have to pay all the different, you know, if you're playing only two types of each basic energy, that's still 16 energy in your deck. And there are going to be games where some of them are prized. And then you've got to get the energy on Smeargle. And generally, I'd go, hey, let's use twin energy. But now we're playing twin energy in addition to the eight different types of basic. And if we only play one of a particular type, it might be prized. And we just get into all kinds of awkwardness here. It seems like a really fun gimmicky deck that will work occasionally and you'll sit there smashing for 270 with Smeargle and it'll be amazing. And other times you won't be able to get the two energy on Smeargle or you won't be able to get enough different types of energy. And there'll be too many games where you're like, ah, oh, one more energy and I get the KO. But you don't have one more energy, ladies and gentlemen. So you don't get the KO and round and round we go. I'm giving it between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. Barrack. If you ask me if I like this card, yes. I think it's a lot of fun and I think it's going to be so much, you know, take this down to League and just have a little bit of a play if League is a thing in the near future. And I think you're going to love it. Do I think it has legitimate potential as a tournament winning deck? I don't. But this is another one of those situations where, prove me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, because I would desperately, desperately like to be wrong. But now it's over to you guys. I want to know what you think about all of these cards, all three of them. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.